and welcome to Encompass Live, uh, our second edition of Encompass Live. Um, Encompass Live is our Nebraska Library Commission's new weekly online event. Um, we are presenting uh, various activities, library topics by NLC staff, and sometimes we will have guests. Um, guest speakers. Um, the sessions are free every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and could have anything that we um, come up with, any but any presentations here, interviews, book reviews, tours, mini training sessions, and Q&A sessions similar to what we are doing today. Um, just to kick off our Encompass Live, we started last week and are continuing this week with our Meet the NLC. Um, just getting to know some of the staff here, what we do, um, who we are, uh, what the commission can do for you. Um, last week we had four people from the commission, and this week we have four more. We were gonna, we are going to have uh, Mary Jo Ryan, the communications coordinator, Richard Miller, our library development director, uh, and a couple other people that will be coming on later. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and we'll just get started and jump right into this right away. Um, Starting off with Mary Jo. Hi, there everybody. Is. <laughs> this is Mary Jo Ryan, and um, that's me. Uh, this is a pose I often strike. I, I'm actually showing off some ways to use return on investment information and communication pieces for your local library. And if you're wondering what that t-shirt says, I can read it to you. I happen to have it right here. <laughs> I spent the day at the library and I got books, magazines, newspapers, CDs, DVDs, audiobooks, research help, large type materials, free internet access, homework help, preschool story times, summer reading programs, full text databases, book discussions, interlibrary loans, computer help, podcasts of book talks, and more. <laughs> And the reason why I wear that t-shirt is because I'm always trying to remind people and remind myself to remind people just how important our local libraries are to us. And that's one of the things that the Library Commission is really dedicated to. Um, let me tell you a little bit about um, some of the people who work in communications. The next slide should be coming up. <laughs> it's um, the next. This is Catherine Brockmeyer. Catherine has recently joined us. Uh, she was with the Hastings Public Library. And we're so lucky to have her as our research analyst and special project associate. She works with us on communication pieces, doing some research and collecting information to help us develop those pieces. She also works with us on grants, and I'll talk more about grants in the future before this day is over. And, um, and she works with our colleague, uh, the esteemed John Felton, who is the Director of Planning and Research and Statistics uh, for the Library Commission. They, they work on uh, quite a bit of information gathering. I'm sure you've gotten some surveys from them and information gathering tools. They'll be talking next week. Is that right, Krista? Yes. They'll be talking next week at Encompass Live in more detail about the Bibliostat Connect process. Um, I also have another person I would like to introduce. Unfortunately, I don't have a photograph of him. His name's Peter Worth. He's our graphic design student intern, and he's just a wonderful asset to the Library Commission. We've enjoyed working with him while he's been in school at the university. He's been developing print pieces for us, working on wikis and website, and uh, he's just been a lot of fun to work with, and a lot of the things you see that come out of the Library Commission have his, his professional stamp on it. Uh, moving on to just say a little bit about public information and communication, um, I think it's really important for us to, to point out that public information and communication efforts really do help fulfill the Library Commission's statutory mission. And just to remind you, the mission of the Nebraska Library Commission is statewide promotion, development, and coordination of library and information services. So as a state library agency, the commission is an advocate for the library and information service needs of all Nebraskans. And we do that by helping you serve your customers. We do it through print, through broadcast, through electronic materials, and through face-to-face -face communication. But our goal is to help all the libraries across the state serve their local customers. 
and we use as our tagline very often you'll see this bringing together people and information yeah let's take a look here This is our website, and it's one of the tools we use to help you know more about what we're up to. Um, and these announcements are changed very regularly, and we keep them on until, say, for example, that grant opportunity that's the third one down. We keep these announcements on until that grant opportunity is no longer available. It goes away and something else replaces it. Krista, do you go down to commission publications, please? There we go. This is a section of our website that's got a lot of information about our print publications. These print publications are really designed for specific target customers. Um, for example, the uh, first one there, if you click on that, this is the NLC Communicator. It comes out three or four times a year. It's got announcements, kind of timely information. It's really designed for our Nebraska librarians and library staff in all kinds of libraries. The things that are in here are things that people who work in libraries would be most interested in. Uh, we do have other target customers, things, uh, people like state agency employees. Kristen, if you don't mind going down a little bit on this page, we can find something that's specifically designed for state agency. Or if you click on What's Up Doc, please. This is a, a blog that we use to communicate with people who are working in state agencies or who are interested in state government information. So we have different kinds of communication pieces. Some of them are print, some of them are electronic. Um, another target group are Nebraska citizens specifically. They're, they're a niche market for us because we don't really serve the general public as it were. We serve groups of people who have specific information needs directly anyway, the people that we serve directly. That would be like customers who can't see to read or hold a book. We serve through our talking book and braille service. And then if you want to click, I think it's up a little bit actually what we're going to. That would be the interchange. There you are. And this has got a print version, audio version, a pod podcast version, and archives of past in issues on it. Again, this is a specific niche market, people who can't see to read or can't hold a book. Um, another group that we serve are intermediary. And we consider those to be people from for the most part, statewide organizations that are intermediaries with our customers. And if you click on NCB News there, you can see this is the Nebraska Center for the Book Newsletter. This goes out to individuals and organizations that have a particular interest in promoting reading. We work with the Center for the Book to put this newsletter together. And uh, happily, we support a lot of other projects in the Center the, for the Book, such as the Letters About Literature contest and several other things that we can talk about as we go along. Just to show, again, another one of our publications, the Encompass, this one comes out three or four times a year, and it also serves as our biennial report. And just for a hint, this is actually not printed yet. It's in the process of being printed at state printing, but you can get access to it right now. It's, it's up as soon as we've got it done, and sometimes state printing takes a little while. So if you need information, you can always keep a, a check on this, and you can also RSS feed this, this publication. So I think that probably gives you a pretty good idea about some of the current publications. And if you need more information, you can always go to this section of our website to find more about our print publications. Just to, to point out um, electronic communication. Oh, exhibit stuff is next. Never mind. Let's do exhibits next. And let's stay in order. Thank you, Krista. Krista's keeping me on track here, so I've got things in order. Oh, okay. So electronic information. If we go to um, to our our back to our front page, there we go. 
there or the publications. That's good. We do a lot of things through electronic medium. That's um, what I showed you before, the blogs, the wikis, the announcements that are on the website. But then to also go down a little bit further on the page, you can see another project that we have that's uh, more electronic, and that's the radio programming. We do a book talk radio show on Wednesday nights at 6.30 Central Time. It's available through 89.3 FM radio in Lincoln. It's also available on the kzum.org website. That's live streaming, live audio stream. And then we also have a podcast of many of the selected shows. We have a list of every show we've ever done. This is a project that we started in 1996 here at the Library Commission, and we started it in conjunction with Lincoln City Libraries. And we've had a lot of fun doing this. There's been a, a history of a variety of book talkers, some from the Library Commission, like uh, Sally Snyder's been involved from the very beginning. She's a library development staff person. Uh, Kit Keller, who was a former staff person here, is was involved and is still involved through KZUM Book Talk. Um, we've had a lot of fun with the people from Lincoln City Libraries. Carol Swanson has been involved, Lane Pierce. It's just been a, a, a really great partnership project and we've sent out dozens and dozens of these tapes to local libraries who think they might want to get certified, then they need to earn 45 hours of CE credit during a three-year period in order to be recertified. Next on certification of public library boards, uh, Linda Jensen and I work on that, and in this case, boards must earn 20 hours of CE credit in a three-year period in order to be recertified. And finally, accreditation of public libraries mm -hmm. themselves I work with the accreditation program, and as you well know, in public libraries, there are three levels of accreditation for public libraries. They're essential, enhanced, and excellent, and these are based on meeting criteria in the accreditation guidelines. Accreditation is also earned for a three-year period, after which the library is eligible for re-accreditation. A public library has to be accredited in order to receive state aid to public libraries and in order to apply for various grants the commission makes available and we'll discuss those grants briefly uh, just to let you know on february the 18th the encompass live session uh, will be on accreditation and certification and laura johnson and i will be offering more in-depth information on those at that time there are also three grants that the uh, library uh, offers, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission offers, and we handle those in library development. There are the Youth Grants for Excellence, which Sally is involved with, and usually those grants are available annually in August, with applications due in October, and we normally have about $40,000 to distribute under those grants. Then we have Continuing Education and Training Grants, and Laura Johnson is involved with those. Those are usually available in May with the applications due in August. And we have about $25,000 for those grants. The library improvement grants for which we have about $200,000 normally are going to be handled by Richard and Sally this time. And these grants are available in October with applications which were due at the end of December. We're just now beginning the evaluation of those grants. And you folks will hear about those by March 20th. We also deal with state aid in library development, and that's running a bit late this year. I'm responsible for that, and I'll be working on that in the near future. Just a little background on state aid. That's granted to accredited public libraries with additional amounts given to those public libraries that have, a, that have managed to uh, be accredited at a higher level, either the enhanced level or the excellent level. The amount of state aid a library received is determined by a formula that's driven by how many libraries are eligible for state aid, which levels those libraries have attained, and how much state aid there is to distribute. In the past number of years, also, the Commission has granted monies under a program called Dollars for Data which has offered $250 to unaccredited public libraries that submit their annual statistics to us. 
and we have about $238,000 per year to distribute in state aid. As was pointed out in next week's Encompass Live, John Felton and Catherine Brockmeyer are going to talk more about Bibliostat Connect and Bibliostat Collect. And Collect is the one that's used to collect the statistics annually. There are other areas of activity and expertise within library development, which I'll run through quickly. Children and Youth Services, of course, is handled by Sally, who also handles the summer reading programs. And Sally makes annual presentations at the NLA NEMA conference and in the system areas, reviewing books related to the year's theme. Just uh, by way of information for you, Sally is currently president of the 48 state consortium known as the CSLP, the Cooperative uh, Summer Library Program, that produces the annual program manual. We also are involved in library development with E-Rate and technology planning, and that's an area I'm involved in. We consult with libraries doing E-Rate, which is the Federal Telecommunications Discount Program. We offer annual training, and we approve the technology plans required for a library to receive discounts on internet access. If you've got questions on library-related laws, I'm the person to call. If you have any questions about the motion picture video licensing process, Sally is the person to call. Sally works with the vendor annually to negotiate an agreement that allows libraries to show movies as part of their programming, that is to show them legally. <laughs> and she also, she also updates the frequently asked questions on the motion picture li video licensing. Go to our website for that if you'd like to see more. We are involved also in planning for libraries. Uh, I've worked with a number of public libraries around the state on long range planning and using the new Planning for Results book. Call me if you have some interest in that area. We also work with the regional library systems. That is all three of us, Laura, Sally, and Richard, all our three professional staff work with those and try to attend all the system board meetings to keep in touch with the efforts of the regional systems. As you may know, the commission provides the majority of the funding for the regional library systems. And finally, Laura Johnson is involved with continuing education. She develops the curriculum for the basic skills classes and is working with several others in redesigning basic skills. She also determines how many hours of CE each event will earn for library-related events in Nebraska. If you have any questions for us in library development, please feel free to call us at the 800 number, 1-800-307-2665, and ask for any of us. And that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. Cool. Does anybody have any questions right now for Richard? Okay, we'll move on to our next department then. We have Vern and Computer Services. Hi, I'm Vern Bias, Computer Services Director. I am the lead staff member on the computer team, which includes three other staff members. And I deliberately don't use the term supervisor because I really don't supervise and I couldn't even if I needed to. <laughs> I think of us as a team of peers and I just happen to be the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of old, I was shocked from doing the math that among the four of us on the team, we have more than 100 years of combined work at the Library Commission, which wow. is pretty shocking. Um, <laughs> so depending on how you look at it, we're either experienced and wise or a bunch of old geezers. <laughs> um, Experience and wise. I like it. <laughs> Our job is to manage the commission's computer infrastructure, which includes workstations and the staff offices, public access workstations, servers, printers, wireless access points, laptops, and of course the network that ties it all together and also connects to the internet. And besides all the hardware, of course, there is software that needs to be installed, configured, maintained, and updated to keep everything working. 
I suspect that many of you out there viewing this webcast have the job of managing technology but have to squeeze it in among other duties, which is not easy to do. Uh, when I first got involved in technology, I was in that position, so I really empathize with you who, who do have to juggle several different job titles. Um, when I think about our job, the picture that always comes to mind, and this re re reveals again how old I am, I think of the circus act on Ed Sullivan with the guys spinning the plates on the poles. <laughs> and I, I think of that constantly, and our job is to keep the plates spinning and keep adding new ones, but not let the old ones crash to the ground, so we have to keep everything going. Um, you know, we add new services and nothing ever goes away. You always have more and more. I'm sure most of you out there can identify with this, even if you're not involved in technology. I think it's just the way the world is these days. Mm -hmm. I want to, I mentioned that there are three other members on the computer team, and I want to real quickly go through, list them, and give you an idea of what they do. Dennis Klebe, um his primary responsibilities include backups and archiving, email management, purchasing, mailing lists, and hardware. And backups and archiving is really a huge job, and it's a thankless one, one that kind of nobody ever realizes going on until something they lose something or if something crashes. Mm -hmm. And we put a lot of effort into backup and archiving, probably more than many organizations do. And sometimes it feels like you're doing a lot of work for nothing, kind of like buying expensive insurance that you can never use, mm -hmm. but you really don't want to go without that insurance. Um, he also manages our mailing lists, which include a whole a wide variety of lists like topic, including topical lists such, such as Child Live and others such as the systems mailing lists. Janet Greaser is really our, we think of her as our help desk person. She's the first point of contact when problems or questions come up. She's also the primary support for our Mandarin library automation system and has heavy involvement managing and maintaining the various NLC websites. Diane Wells is our primary support for talking book and braille service, which includes many specialized systems, notably the Reads automation system, and a lot of technologies that support uh, recording and circulation of digital materials for the visually impaired. She also gets involved heavily in a lot of new technologies, including recently the several wikis that have been set up on our website, and she's recently also worked on a new uh, online course management system called Moodle, working with uh, the library development people on that. And me, I kind of try to oversee everything to some extent, spend time on planning if possible. In recent years, I found myself spending a lot more time on security issues. That seems to be a, an increasing uh, need, unfortunately which could be in itself be a full-time job to really do a thorough job of it. I also do quite a bit of programming, which these days takes the form of dynamic web pages and web applications. <clears throat> we try to do a lot of cross-training to the extent we can so that each of us understands enough about everything that we can step in and provide support if needed. But the reality is that many of these systems are so specialized and complex that only one of us really has in-depth knowledge. And so for that reason, documentation is extremely important. And we also hope that none of us gets hit by a truck or anything like that. <laughs> um, keeping up with change is a constant battle and not limited to technology of course as you know um, things sort of move from barely visible to must have almost overnight so it's a challenge to keep these new, new to get these new technologies installed and then to keep them patched and updated and migrated from one operating system to the next and from one set of hardware to the next so even maintaining the status quo takes a lot of effort. It's kind of like treading water, I guess. Um, just as an example, I still think of our current servers as fairly new, but the reality is they're about six years old, which is really getting close to retirement age for hardware. 
So we're beginning to work on plans to replace them. And over the past year or so, we've migrated all of our workstations from Windows XP, which was about seven years old at the time we started the migration to Vista. So in my, my uh, happy days, I think, well, we're in pretty good shape with workstations, but the truth is by the time the servers are migrated, it will be time to start working on the next round of workstation migration. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a never-ending cycle, as you know. Coping strategies, there are a couple of things I think worth mentioning that we've latched on to to help us cope with this constant uh, change. One of them is that we've developed hundreds of little programs, and we kind of call them robots, just for lack of a better term, that during the night go out and perform all kinds of maintenance, things like backups and archiving, checking web links and re-indexing databases, checking file security, reading logs, the, the list is endless. And they do all that for us, so that number one, the things do get done. Um, and number two, we don't have to spend as much time doing it. But we've learned the hard way that you can't just trust that all of those things work every night. So we also have another series of programs that every morning give us a status report on all the things that happened overnight. And so we spend the first part of the day typically going out and looking at whatever problems occurred during the night and trying to fix them. Uh, another of the survival strategies that we've adopted several years ago was to try to simplify our environment as much as possible by standardizing on a single workstation platform and a single server platform. At one time a few years ago, we were running two different versions of Unix, two different versions of Novell Netware, and two different versions of Windows. As you can imagine, it's pretty challenging to keep up with all that, not only to keep up with patches and updates, but just to maintain fluency enough to, to get the job done and all those. So we made a deliberate, concerted effort to focus all of our efforts on a single platform to the extent that we could. And we ended up deciding to standardize on Windows, in part because many of the applications that we ran, including the TVBS read system, for example, were only available for Windows. And another factor is that we, as a library, are eligible for academic pricing on Microsoft products, which made the pricing very attractive. And I want to take a minute to just um, talk about the academic pricing. Um, Chris, if we could go to the slide or the website. Sure. Um, I want to note that this academic pricing is available to public academic and school libraries around the state, and it really is a huge discount. Um, if you do a search, I want to show people how to get to this. If you do a search on our site and you could search for software as an example, you should, the first link that comes up, computer purchasing recommendations. If we go there, at the bottom of that page is a link to Soft Choice, which is the reseller that manages the discounted pricing in Nebraska. And let's see, it's, where it is, it's up a little, think. there it is. Um, uh, just one more paragraph. There we go. Oh. The link right just about up, above. Oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, okay. um, you'll notice here the link and that you have to log in. The login information is provided here. The username is any and the password is select. Do we have to log in or no? No, okay. we don't need to go to that. <laughs> um, so if you want to check out the academic pricing and what's available to you, this is a place you can get to it. And it's also linked from a few other places on our website. So I really encourage everybody to look at that. Um, just to give you an idea of how uh, how attractive the pricing is, I did a quick search last night, and I found that the, the retail pricing through a standard vendor for Office 2007 Professional is about $450. But the academic pricing through for libraries is fifty-three dollars, mm -hmm. so it's about a ninety percent discount in many cases. It's really significant, so mm -hmm. really don't want to can't overemphasize that. Um, 
couple of final notes. I'm almost finished. Um, early, early as we were getting into technology, I remember distinctly for several years we had the goal of having a, a workstation for every staff member. And for many, many years, that was a distant dream that we, we hoped would happen someday, but we didn't know. And we've now, as I've looked at numbers, we've reached the point where we have numerically two workstations for every staff member. That counts. That counts public access to computers and laptops and everything. But we've definitely come a long way in that regard. And another point that I think is worth noting is a trend recently is setting up dual monitors on workstations which when you think about it in a lot of ways is almost like giving people two computers so if you look at that we're probably up to a three to one ratio now um, i also just wanted to note that many many other staff commission are involved in managing technology and supporting technology it's not just the computer team so we by all means don't do it all so there's lots of credit or, or blame to go and generally, I'd say if we're successful, we're pretty invisible, and I try to stay invisible and live behind the scenes. But when you hear the plates crashing, that's when you <laughs> kind of know that we're here. That's a bad sign. So that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Vern about the computers? Oh, uh, the login information is noted on that uh, computer hardware recommendations page. If you search on on software on our website and then scroll down and look for the soft link, you'll see the login information. It is the Password is any, or the ID is any, and the password is select. There's one more question. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, um, there's another question in our text chat, uh, Kevin Leafly. Which version of Vista do you recommend for libraries? Mm, yeah, I believe we have specified a couple of versions on our recommendations page, and that's that's not an easy call, but I would say you definitely don't want to go with the basic version, or even probably, um, I would say, I would recommend either going with the business version or the uh, home ultimate, yeah. Either definitely don't go at the low end, go at one of the higher end, either the business or the ultimate versions. You do give up quite a few features on the basics, and the price difference, especially with academic pricing, is, is minimal. Mm -hmm. okay. Were there any other questions for Vern? Okay, on to Network Services and Debra. Okay, um, I asked to go last so that I could use up any of the extra time that other people didn't use. <laughs> and of course they didn't leave me any extra time. So <laughs> I will set <laughs> late so you can get yes. the last one. Okay. I I will basically hit the high points. Um, I am Deborah Dragos, the Network Services Director. Um, I have a number of staff in my department who do widely varying things. So I'm not going to go through each person one by one and tell you what they do because that would take half an hour right there. So I think what we'll do, Krista, if we could go, if you could do the app share. You want to Last one. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go to our um, network services page. This is basically. Oops, and then I have to move over. 
this is where most of the information about what my department resides. Um, and we'll start off to begin with databases. One of the most important things that we do in our department is consortial purchasing, consortial, any kind of thing that we can do to get libraries working together, okay? So what we um, do for the main part is getting information through databases. Now, some of these databases we have actually purchased access to for all Nebraska residents, and they reside in the Nebraska Access site, which most of you are probably very familiar with. Um, Alana and Susan do database roadshows to teach people how to use the um, databases that are available, and we have several of them that cover general magazine articles, biographies, genealogy information, just things that a lot of our residents are looking for when they need information, okay? Beyond the databases that we purchase for all of the residents in the state, we also do negotiating with vendors to get discount pricing for our libraries for specific databases. Now, um, the, we, we, you can see there's a very, very long list. <laughs> um, but for a lot of these, only one or two libraries actually subscribe. It varies widely by database. They do prefer that we do have one, more than one library participating to get a discount. However, some of these are so unique that we have actually joined with other networks around the country to get discounts because we can pull in more libraries and get better, better pricing, okay? Um, we also do invoicing for a lot of these databases. The vendors just find it easier and our libraries find it easier just to get the billing from us too when we do make a group purchase, okay? We also do database trials. If there are any databases that you are interested in looking at, maybe interested in purchasing, and you're wondering if there are other libraries out there who would join you in purchasing to bring the price down, all you need to do is contact us. You can call me or you can call Susan Nisley, and we will contact the vendor and see if we can't set up a trial. The trials are listed on our database trial page. We also send the information out on our trial mailing list. If you're not currently subscribed to the trial mailing list, I really recommend that you do subscribe. This is where we send out all the information about databases that we're looking to put groups together to purchase. Okay, make sure. I, one of the other things that we do with the database vendors and vendors of different types of materials, for a couple, three years now, we have had a vendor day too, where we bring in vendors and allow them to actually do little presentations to um, participants about their products. Okay. Okay, we'll go back, let me see here, to the discount purchasing. This is just another way to get into this page where we list all of the vendors that we work with. And I am going to actually skip down to the O's and mention our OverDrive project. Now this isn't actually a database of information. This particular vendor sells downloadable audio books. And we ha currently have 
our numbers are getting up there. We currently have 33 libraries that share a collection of downloadable audio books. Um, there are over a thousand titles now. Um, patrons can check out several audiobooks, keep them for um, seven days on their computer. If they transfer those items to or those books to an MP3 player, they can keep them in, in for an indefinite period of time actually. Information about pricing, joining the group is at the bottom of this page. And if you're interested, please give us a call. Our contact information is here. You can contact either Susan Nisley or myself. Okay, moving along here. Get back, Verna. Um, one of the other um, group things that we do is <laughs> OCLC services, um, currently anyway, since the late 1970s, we have acted as OCLC's regional service provider for Nebraska under the name of Need Base. Here, you have access to cataloging, interlibrary loan, and various other services that OCLC provides. As of July 1st, we no longer will be the network representing OCLC in Nebraska. You will have to, at least to begin with, go directly to OCLC for um, the services that actually Krista currently provides, which are um, training, uh, support, um, questions about you know, any, any of the products that that OCLC sells. Okay. One of the other um, consortial purchases here too is a net, is a an OCLC product called Net Library, where Neebase has joined with a number of the other OCLC networks to purchase groups of electronic books, and that collection is also shared. People can actually check out books and read them online. Okay. One of our means of communication about the things that are going on in network services is our N cubed. Um, we use a blog uh, software, but we call it our our uh, newsletter for OCLC purposes. Um, but anything that's being done with OCLC, um, trials of databases, training sessions on technology and a variety of other things are reported in our NCUBE newsletter. So you can always go there for more information. And you can sign up for RSS feed too. Okay, um, moving down the line, cataloging services. Emily Nimsakant is our cataloger. She started with us in October, and she catalogs the collection, collect, item, collection items that come into the commission, which include federal depository materials, state depository materials, and just general reference material, most of which is library or technology related. Through the cataloging services though, we also have a program that was started here a couple years ago called the Cataloging Certificate Program, where we recognize those people in technical services who take a, a specified number of our cataloging classes. And actually the one that we have on the calendar that's coming up at the moment is authority control, which will be held March 19th in Omaha. But when you've completed um, enough classes, we actually hand out two levels of certificates. One is a basic certificate and one is an advanced certificate. Okay. Okay. 
Another group project that we're working on is an open source integrated library system. And Susan Nisley has put together a page for us where you can look at um, a number of sources related to products that are out there for automated systems. The two main ones, of course, being um, Evergreen and Koha. And there's also information about different training um, symposium sessions that we have done in the last year or two. Another group, <laughs> I keep talking about another group. <laughs> um, pro yeah, another group project that we're working on that we have not actually put out an announcement on yet is for um, library websites. We will be starting to send out information soon on a product called Plinkit which allows libraries to create web pages very simply. And then those web pages will be hosted on a server that the library commission is um, arranging, okay? So there, it will be a totally free service. You will be able to edit the pages anytime you want, put up as many pages as you want. The server will be backed up, so you won't have to be have to worry about um, uh, losing any pages, or you won't have to worry about viruses or pages crashing or anything like that. We will get more information out to you as soon as possible. Okay, another big thing that the commission is involved with is technology. Michael Sowers is our tech, technology innovations librarian, and he drags all of us, some of us kicking and screaming, <laughs> <laughs> into the world of new technologies. And part of that new technology is social networking. And actually, several of the people in my department have been involved with a project called Nebraska Learns, where you can go in and actually practice using a number of different products that are out there related to Web 2.0, such as blogs, wikis, Flickr, um, instant messaging, tagging and social bookmarking, um, including Delicious, which is what we are using this morning. If you're really, really quick, they keep telling me, <laughs> you have until January 31st to complete all of the things that are listed, 23 things, that are listed here in Nebraska Learns 2.0. Those Nebraska librarians who do complete all 23 things will be entered for a drawing in, um, <clears throat> in which you could be eligible, you could be chosen to get, Krista, what are they? Oh, um, one of iPods. I, I saw some iPods. Nine, <laughs> one of nine MP3 players. Ah, got oh, it. Okay. MP3 They're not specifically iPods. Not They're specific. Right. Creative Zen um, uh, MP3 players. So you have what, a week now? You could finish it off January in a week? 30th. Two weeks. January. Two weeks. Oh, Two you weeks. have plenty of time. January 30th is the deadline. Yeah. Um, some of the other technology things, we do have a page set up for information on Flickr, telling you how to use it, what it is, a little bit of training information. We also have a page set up on gaming and libraries, which gives you um, information about how other libraries are using gaming and books that are available about the topic okay. and gaming systems. Okay, mm, I'm getting uh, running close out of time, but there were just two other things I want to mention here. We do a lot of work on um, Nebraska Memories. I know Beth Goble mentioned this last week. 
Um, my department is very involved in this too. Alana Namatni does all of the back um, and customization and loading of records and things like that. If anyone is interested in contributing a digitized um, collection to Nebraska Memories, this is the page that where you can find the information about how to become a participant. Okay. Um, one last comment about a project that we're working on. Krista Burns and I have been working on the latest Gates grant, um, the Opportunity Online Hardware Grant. So my department, as you can see, is involved in many, many, many <laughs> different projects, um, and we just keep taking them on. So that's a quick overview of network services. Anybody have any questions for Deborah about network services and all of the random things that we do there? Just <laughs> <laughs> get some fast loans again. Oh, okay. Um, in delicious. Yeah, and um, yes, uh, Kevin is asking for the link to get to Nebraska Learns. We actually have it right here on our um, PowerPoint as well. It's the second link there. That's the URL for it. Um, all of the links that people showed today um, and some that people didn't show, but anyone that were of interest in the different departments from this week and last week are actually in the Library Commission's Delicious account where we bookmark websites of interest. Um, when the recording for this is posted out, we'll all have all the links to those available to you so you'll be able to get to anything that anybody linked to today from there. You should also be able to find it by doing a quick search on our website. That's true too, yes. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions for anybody about anything they spoke about today? We're just so good. <laughs> Wore them out, I think. <laughs> oh, we're getting a little applause, Dina. Thank oh, you very thank much. Thank you, Dina. Um, anything else anybody else wants to? I guess I did have one thing. This is Mary Jo. I just wanted to ask um, if there are any topics that you would like okay. to see addressed in these, this broadcast, okay. and you don't have to, to tell us now. We're okay. always open to suggestion. You can email Krista. You can email me. You can uh, click on your text chat box and type it in if you've got a suggestion right now. But really, we, we want to make these really serve your needs. So if there are topics that you would like to, to, for us to find out more about, to give you information on, or for us to bring in a speaker, we'd be happy to do that too. Or if you want to volunteer to speak about something. Oh yeah. We are totally open to guest speakers as well. It's not all just the library commission. This is a, the Encompass Live is for any sort of library services and things that are going on in the Nebraska library world. So any other final questions, comments, anything anybody wants to say? Yep. Okay, then that wraps up our Encompass Live for this week. Thank you very much. Um, the recording should be available this afternoon. I'll let you know when that's ready. Thank you. Bye-bye.